Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to True North Church Online. I'm Brad. This is... I am Jennifer. Jennifer. And we're excited to get to share with you this morning the Word of God. And uh, we're looking forward to being through this time that we're going through. Amen. Uh, we heard a minister yesterday share with us that the things that are seen are temporal. And you have to remember that during a time like this, that we are in a time period that's temporary, that this, this isn't the new norm, this isn't everybody's going to be talking about this, but that at some point we will get through it, and, um, and it'll be God that brings us through and, and helps us through. But before we begin this morning, we just want to share a couple of things with you about what's happening at True North Church and how we're handling uh, this time. Uh, obviously, Sunday morning services will be online at 1030 every Sunday morning. So uh, we look forward to you joining us and, and, and learning more about what the Word of God has to say. Uh, all communication will be through our website and our text line. So our, our website is truenorth.sc, but you can also get there by going to tnc.sc. But truenorth.sc, that's T-R-U-E-N-O-R-T-H dot S-C. And then if you would like to join our text line, if you're not receiving texts from us, and you would like to join our text line, send us a text at 864-920-1624. That's 864-920-1624. And just simply put join and then your first name and last name. And that will get you on our text line so that you're receiving news alerts, you're receiving links, um, and, and, and things like that. If you have a prayer request, you can send it to the text line. Or you can email us at info at truenorth.sc. Just so you know, when you reply to that text line with your prayer request, everyone doesn't see your reply. Right. We'll then resend it with the right number of characters. So you can reply and communicate to us through that line, and everyone doesn't see that. And then that's just, that'll, that'll go to a special group of people that are a designated prayer team, and uh, they're always excited to have an opportunity to pray for you right. and to pray for the things that are going on in your life. And uh, we want to see God be victorious. We want to see God be victorious in your life because if he's victorious in your life, that means he's continuing to be victorious in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're excited to have that. You have the opportunity to subscribe to our website. And uh, so when you go to truenorth.sc, there will be a, a little message that comes up that says subscribe. You can subscribe there and we'll ask you for some information. And that will put you on our email list. And we don't send lots of emails out. We send a lot. We do communicate mainly through text and then through the website. But if we do send an email out, you may need to check your spam or junk to release those so that you'll see those. We've because sent several recently. If you're on that list yes. and you haven't seen them, then you need to check your spam. Yes. So uh, that's that's another way that we're trying to communicate and to make sure that you're getting the information that you need. And uh, we just want to remind you to like and share our posts yes. on Get social the word media. Out. We are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and our handle on all three is True North SC. And uh, we would love for you to tag True North SC with uh, praise reports, with uh, stories of thankfulness, any something that means something to you that uh, that that we, you could share with all of us. Tag us, and uh, that's just another way for people to know that you're hooked up with us. Yeah, we're and, in this together. We're excited, excited to be in this together. Amen. Amen. Do you want to share anything this morning? Well, uh, I thank you for allowing us to come into your homes. Welcome to our home. Thank you to uh, Jonah and Silas who led us in some awesome worship this morning. Our family enjoyed that. Hope that your family did. Uh, you know, I just want to encourage you through this time. Um, as I was thinking about, uh, you know, where we are, it reminded me, of one of my heroes of the faith, which is Corey Ten Boom. Um, she's a, a woman that I, I greatly admire and look up to. She's in heaven now. She was a Dutch watchmaker, and her family helped many Jews escape the Nazis during the Holocaust during World War II. And some uh, striking similarities to her day in our day is that they were under curfews, they were limited where they could go and when. They had rations on food. Uh, people's lives were threatened. 
and congregating, especially churches assembling, was not allowed. And even though it's very different circumstances, uh, some very similar yeah, situations very similar. Yes. that we're experiencing. And you know, today there's a lot of talk of paring your, your life down to what is essential and, uh, and to eliminate the non-essential. And I just want to encourage you this morning that, you know, as the body of Christ, it's very important that we keep it straight, what truly is essential. You know, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, right. but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Right. And um, when, when Corey Ten Boom actually, her and her uh, father and sister and, and other members of her family, um, um, because of harboring the Jews and keeping them safe and keeping them alive, were actually thrown into uh, a concentration camp in Germany, um, and which was a, an even more dire situation than they had been in. And she ended up finding favor with a nurse, uh, a, a German nurse there, and the nurse said, you know, is there something that I could get you? Um, she was sick and seeing the nurse, she said, is there something I could get you that would be a help to you? And um, just thinking, is there some sort of comfort item that I could give you? And Corey said, I want a Bible. And her essential item, you know, and the nurse said, well, I don't, I don't know that I can do that. And she said, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And she ended up getting her a New Testament of the Bible. And it was just miraculous that she was able to keep it. And it wasn't discovered through, you know, through uh, all the routine there. And uh, with that Bible, Corey stayed encouraged, and Corey led many, many of those women to the Lord. And one by one, she tore out the pages of her Bible and gave it to those ladies that she led to the Lord. And I think that's such an inspiration when we think about what's essential and what's non-essential. So let's not get distracted. Let's not get discouraged. Let's right. keep our eyes. This is temporal, yep. but you know this whole time is temporal. So I think it's important we keep that in mind. Yeah, mode. it's a it's a testing and a trying of our faith and and who we are as Christians, as Americans. We have it we have it easy, and it's because of our uh, rich heritage of of godly uh, living, godly leaders. For the past 200 and plus years it's and so be it's for. been very easy but when we come to a place like this come to a time like this it's it can be easy to get distracted mm -hmm. and get get our eyes off of what's essential and there are a lot of distractions yes oh my people's goodness. lives are turned upside down everybody has been disrupted to some measure yes. some more than others or routines are you know turned on end yeah so it's important that we that we keep what's important before us and you know, and, and I'm, I was reminded, we, we started a couple of weeks ago talking about the name of Jesus and what the name of Jesus means and what it, what it means to the body of Christ. And uh, a minister, a great minister, E.W. Kenyon, talks about the name of Jesus. And I'm reading, I'm reading some of his, his, his books right now, some of his material. And he was talking about that if Christians truly understood what was carried in the name of Jesus... Amen. We wouldn't look and we wouldn't act the same that we act That's like right. we do right now. And, and, and when you're put under a time of pressure, which is, that's what this is, when your life is turned upside down, when you are all of a sudden, I've got to work from home, my kids have to be homeschooled, I can't go to the store, and if, or if I do go to the store, there's no me. toilet paper, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's lines everywhere, there's, you know, we're starting to see in our area, they're putting the shields up between the, the person that's buying and the cash the cashier. And, and you know, there's, it's, it's so much change. And what's amazing is how fast it's changed. Just in the last month in Greenville, South Carolina, how quickly we're, we have changed to treat this and to treat something that's in some areas of the country, it's, it's a bigger issue. And it's, it's, it's even more of a distraction, even more. And in our area, you know, we're, we're taking the measures to make sure that we're being careful and but, but, you know, you can get your eyes on all that. And you can be thinking, well, am I doing this right? Am I washing my hands? Am I, you know, am I not touching my face? You know, all the things they're saying, am I six feet? Am I six feet away from the person next to me? And you can be thinking, am I doing all these things? But what the most important thing, and especially is the body of Christ, and what we have the opportunity to share, 
during this time is what the powerful, that powerful name of Jesus, what it means to the body of Christ. Yeah, that it was not an accident. It wasn't, that's, that's not, you know, we, we talked a couple of weeks ago, and, and you can go back and listen to our services online at truenorth.sc, but you can go back and you can listen to where that name Jesus originated. Jesus was a very popular name during the time that, that he was born, uh, over 2,000 years ago. It was very popular, like John or, you know, Brad or, you know, names like that. But, but there was something different about this name because when the angel told Joseph, you are to name Jesus. He said, you are to name Jesus yes, Yesu. He said, you are to name Jesus Yesu. And it didn't mean Jesus, like just name him Jesus. It meant you're naming him God Almighty saved. And that salvation is going to be embodied. It's going to become the word. John chapter 1 says the word became flesh. And all throughout history, when God has dealt with his people, and the people of the earth, he's always done it through his word. He spoke. Yeah. He spoke through somebody. Yeah. He spoke through an angel. He spoke through, he always shared his word and always, and his word, the Bible tells us that his word does not return to him void, but it accomplishes what it was sent forth to accomplish. And so when God said, I want you to name him Jesus, he meant, I want you to name him Jesus God who saves, and that God, that it's, that it's the name, that name of Jesus yes. that brings salvation. Amen. And we were, we were excited. Last, the last time we were together, Miss Jennifer had shared a scripture from Proverbs mm -hmm. about the name of the Lord being a strong tower and that the righteous run into it and that they're safe. We, I came along, and that was part of my, my, my message, the, the message there. But it's so important to understand that the name of the Lord so the name of the Lord is Jesus. Jesus. It's Jesus. And when the Old Testament talks about the name of the Lord, or the Lord was there, or the Lord was with them, or the Lord was, was with them in the, in the lion's den, or the Lord was with them in the furnace, or the Lord was, was with them when the battle was too great, or, 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 or that the Lord was even with them when there was a pestilence, when there was a disease that was among them, and all they had to do was look, look towards that representation of what Jesus was going to be for us. And what's awesome is that we get to look back on that and go, that's what Jesus is for us. Jesus is the healer. Yeah. Jesus is the Savior that he not just brings us, you know, he doesn't, it's not just, well, when I die, I get to go to heaven. It's, I believe in Jesus now. That means he's my healer. He's my rescuer. He's my deliverer. He's my He's the one that makes me prosperous. He makes me abundant to every good work. That name of Jesus, and it's so important that we understand that name is packed. It is packed with power. And as the body of Christ, if we will realize that and understand that, we will be so much more confident and so much more bold yes. in our representation of being the body of Christ and yes. being part of the body of Christ. Yes. But in Proverbs chapter 18, verses 10 through 11, it tells us that the name of the, of the Lord is a strong tower and that the righteous run into it and are safe. And if you call on God, if you call on Jesus, you call on the name of the Lord, that means that you're calling on the word, that you're going to scripture. You know, sometimes you, 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 you can be, well, I'm calling on Jesus, 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 Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with, with just saying the name of Jesus. But what God wants you to do is he wants you to call on the word and, and get to know the scriptures. Get to understand the man, the person that Jesus was when he walked on the earth. He was, yes, he was God in the flesh, but he was a man that walked among us, that was exercising the Holy Ghost. The, the Spirit of God was exercising through him. And Jesus said that he came to show us the will of the Father. Amen. And everywhere he went, he went about doing good mm -hmm. and healing. He went about teaching and sharing what the kingdom of God was, was, was supposed to be like. And it's not, not what the kingdom of God is supposed to be like in heaven, but what the kingdom of God is supposed to be like here. And as we're believers in Christ and believers in the body, of, in, 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 the, in the word of God and Jesus, all of a sudden now we're part of the kingdom of God here. Mm -hmm. And then it's for now, it's not for later. And so that name is so important that, that in Proverbs it talks about it being a strong tower. It talks about it being a, a place of safety and protection. That not, you know, we can't run and, and go get into the name of Jesus physically. 
You know, we can, we can run and, and go and, and, we, and we miss it. We, we, we truly miss getting to be together and assembling together. We believe that is such a, an important part of being in the body of Christ is assembling together as, as a body and as believers of like faith. And, and you know, and we miss that. But that's not even what Paul, what, 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 what the, what, what this, the proverb, the person that's right, the Greek that wrote the proverb, David, that he's saying. He's not, or Solomon, he's saying, he's saying, I'm not running into this tower. I'm not running into 3339 Wade Hampton Boulevard. He says, I'm running into the name of the Lord. I'm running into the word of God. Well, it's interesting here that the the Passion Translation even kind of amplifies what you're saying Mm -hmm. in different words. The character of God is a tower of strength. That's what you were saying. It's. It's a name, but it's what's behind that name. That's For right. the lovers of God delight to run into his heart yes. and be exalted on high. Yes. And so that's, I mean, and that's, it's, it's so important. During these times where we are stressed, we are being, and that's, you know, um, we've always heard, you know, when you're put under pressure, it's it, what comes out of you is what you've been putting into you, what you've been pre- preparing yourself for. That's what comes out of you during this time. And so if you're running around and you're anxious and you're you're worried and, oh, I don't know, the stock market's doing this, the stock market's doing that, the news is saying this, that, you know, this is all going on. Listen, everybody loves to share bad news. It's obvious. Because when you turn on the TV, when you get on the internet, when you get on Twitter, when you get on Facebook, people are constantly sharing bad news. But as the body of Christ, we're supposed to be sharing good news. Right. We're supposed to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and, and how important that is. And, and so one of, the, one of the scriptures that you hear a lot and that I've heard a lot and seen a lot and a lot of ministers are talking about is Psalms 91. And it's such a beautifully written psalm. You know, we talked uh, the last time we were together, we talked about how David was, was, was in, a, in, a, in a moment of pressure. His son was, he was trying to decide, God, what, you know, what do I do here? My son, do I have to fight? Do I have to battle my son? Because he's, he's taking the kingdom into a, a different direction. And, you know, and sometimes we're faced with, with decisions like that. People that we love may not choose Jesus. They may not choose God. They may not choose to, to make, make him their source. And, and so David, he understood that. And he, and he said in Psalms 91.1, he said, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, or Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I will trust. And I, I want to I wanna just hit this, this part here in, in verse 2 where he's, he calls him the Almighty. When he, when he says when he says in verse 1 at the end, he says, resting in the shadow of the Almighty, that, that he, the Hebrew word there, it literally means Almighty. It literally means there's nobody mightier than him. There's, it literally means there's nobody greater than him. And that, that without this, it's nothing. That when, when, if you don't put this word Almighty in the Hebrew, in this met in this in this scripture that it, it, it even it even lessens what God what God is here. And so it's important that we realize that when we say he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and that's just being in his presence. Amen. Being in the presence of God. I will say of Yahweh that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And then it goes on, this, the, this psalm continues on in verse, verses 3. He says, For I, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. And we, we spend a lot of, a lot of people are spending a lot of time, the deadly pestilence. And that's, that is what we're, we're battling that right now. And, you know, as, as, as we're having to meet in a different way with church and, and gather together in a different way, in a different manner, uh, it's not because we're afraid of catching this this virus. It's we're we're honoring the government. We're honoring the officials that are asking us to not do this because the Bible tells us. The Bible says that He'll deliver us from that. That's right. That means that if we're in the way of it, if it's heading towards us, 
that he will snatch us and grab us and take yeah. us, take us, pull us out of it before it can get to us. So it says that he will, he will deliver us from that. And then in verse 4, it says that he'll cover us with his feathers and under his wings. You'll take refuge. You'll get safety. You'll get protection. And his faithfulness. Oh, you know, what Miss Jennifer was saying that the passion said about, the, about Proverbs, the character of God that so many times we... People, the body of Christ is guilty of this, of saying that well, well, bad stuff comes from God, and that comes from God to teach us and to you know and to, to get us right, and you know that's not in God's character. No, God. I, I love what it says here. It says His massive arms are wrapped wow. around you, protecting you. That's awesome. That's awesome, and that's His faithfulness. That's His faithfulness. That's who He is. And one thing the word tells us is that God is not a man that he should lie, mm -hmm. that there is no shadow. When he turns, there's no, his shadow doesn't even change. God can't change. Amen. And so when the men and women of the Old Testament talk about God and his faithfulness and his awesomeness and his power mm -hmm. and, 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 and how he delivered them and how he rescued them and how he, he, he saved them and how he, he helped them in battles— that's the same God that's working today. That's the same God that Jesus was talking about when, in, in the Gospels. When Jesus spoke about the kingdom of heaven, that's who God, he was talking about. That's where he had come from, and that's, that's who God is. And during this time, you can't, you can't say that something like this. You can't say honestly and truthfully that God is sending sickness and disease to the earth. When you see how much devastation how much pain, how much sorrow, how much hurt, how much, uh, how it separates. This is separating families. This is separating uh, you from your friends. It's, uh, you know, it's heartbreaking to see the images of, of the people in the, in the, in the uh, retirement centers, that their families are standing outside and they're looking through the window at each other. And that's not God. So it, it's important that we understand that when God put Jesus on this earth, and that when Joseph was told to name him Yesu, God Almighty who saves, that that is what is sustaining us, that is what is supplying us. And I, I just want to finish with Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. And it's, it, it, this helps us helps us understand, helps us to, to be confident and to be confident as believers in what this name of Jesus means. And I'm, I'm reading it out of, out of the Passion Translation, and we are uh, still sending those out every, every weekday. We send out what chapter to read, so we're reading through the Bible, through the New Testament this year. But in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Because of that obedience, and he's talking about in the, in the scriptures before what Jesus did. And how Jesus was obedient even unto death on the cross. Ah, and we're getting ready. I mean, we're two weeks away from Easter. And what that means to us as Christians, that without that perfect sacrifice, what Jesus did, sacrifice, to die on the cross for our sins, that's what he did. But in verse 9, he says, because of that obedience, God exalted him. And listen, he multiplied his greatness. He multiplied it. And when God multiplies, it's not one times two. It's not two times. It is, you know, we, we see we see Jesus talks about in, in the Gospels 30 and 60 and 90, how much God multiplies that what we give him, what he what he multiplies back to us. And that Jesus being obedient actually multiplied his greatness, and that now he has been given the greatest of all names. That the name of Jesus, and I'm not talking about uh, Jesus that may play professional baseball. I'm talking about the name of Jesus that's found in the Holy Scriptures, in the Bible, in the written word of God. The name of Jesus has now been given the greatest of all names. And let me tell you something. The authority in verse 10 of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to this name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. 
and every tongue will proclaim in every language that Jesus is, is Lord. And, and the passion here says, Lord Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God his Father. The name of Jesus brings glory and honor to God his Father. Amen. And that's what is the body of Christ. We are now the body of Christ and Jesus is the head. We, we learn in, in Corinthians that Jesus is the head and that we're the body and that we're the ones that are actually operating now in the kingdom of God. Amen. But we can't do it without operating with the name of Jesus. That that's what does it. Because it says that Jesus has now been given the greatest of all names. And that everything, that means any sickness, any disease, any, any situation that you may come across in life that, that is, that, that, that's there to break you down and to tear you down and to, to make you feel like you're less than who you are and, and you're not who, you know, God has created you with a great purpose and he needs you. He, he wants you functioning in the greatness of the name of Jesus. Not, not in any other name, but in the name of Jesus. But he says that everything and everyone will one day submit to this name. It doesn't matter if you believe in the name of Jesus or not. One day, you will have to submit to that name. One day, you will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. That is what is in the name of Jesus. That is what is, 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 is God backs the name of Jesus. And, and all through, not just in the Gospels, but in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the book of Acts, as the disciples and the, 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 were learning and walking in what the power of the name of Jesus, Jesus taught them before he, before he ascended to heaven, before he went to heaven. He taught them about how to function in the name of Jesus. And then everything had to, had to submit during that time. And the apostles were bold, and they, they used it. They didn't try it. They used it because they knew who Jesus was. That means because they knew who Jesus was, that means they knew who God is. They knew who Jesus is, they knew who God is, and now they knew who they were. And they were able to operate and to function in the name of Jesus. And so during this time, it, it's, it's oh, it, you can get consumed with, with everything that's going on around you. And it's like this thrown on top of it. And then we're in, we're in springtime. You know, and, and weather can change, and there's there can be opportunities for, for destruction, and, and we've seen that in the last couple of weeks with tornadoes in different parts of the area and the, and the country. But don't get overwhelmed. You know, that's one of the songs that I love that we sing. God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. I won't be overwhelmed because I'm looking to you. I'm calling on your name. I'm calling on the name of Jesus. Yes. And how do you do that? You've got to get in the Word. Right. You've got to be reading the Word. You've got to be to be not just looking at the what Jesus said, but looking at, at the letters that are written to the to, to the churches in Ephesians and Philippians. And, 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 and we've got to be consuming ourselves with the Word because we can't be who God called us to be, trying to function in who we think we are because we've got to be functioning in who God says that we are. It's so important at this time that we guard our confession. Yeah. You know, it's by the confessing of Jesus as Lord. Yes. When that is the conviction of our heart that we're born again. And it's there's power in Romans 8, in Romans 10, 8 through 10. Yes. There is power in the gospel for whatever you need. Yes. There's power to receive Christ and be transformed to a new creature in Christ Jesus. There is power over sickness and disease. There's power over every yes. destruction. But we have to guard our confession. Yes. This is important time. This is important time as families uh, that we are showing our children. We're spending a lot more time together. Yes. And so the truth is being revealed. And so you might see some places that you need to shore up. You might find that uh, that our, our, our chapters that we're reading every week, that you do it as a family and do it out loud and discuss it. And you'll be shocked with your children of how much wisdom that they receive from God. Um, and it's such an important time to guard the confession of your mouth. And your confession is a real uh, um, meter 
about what you've been putting in. Yes. So, so listen to that and allow, uh, allow it to quicken you and say, oh, we need to get more of the word and maybe less of the news uh, going yes, in. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's, that's a great word. We, we, want to, we want to pray with you this yeah. morning. We want to pray before we, before we uh, leave you virtually, leave <laughs> you online. Uh, we're, you know, we're thankful. And technology is amazing. Um, and we've been, we've been bouncing back and forth some different ways that we can uh, get together because we, we do feel like it's important. And we miss getting to see yeah, your face. It's, it's, and, you know, we believe that the Bible means it when it says, do not forsake the assembly yes. of yourselves. And so this, this will have to do for now, but we are looking forward to being together, yes. and we draw strength from you. And just, and just I want to remind you, and I want to remind the, the dads out there that I'm a dad, and you know I can, I can speak to this, that as, as the leaders of our family, you know, we, Jennifer and I lead our family together, but we're leaders also, and, and as the leaders of our family, that, that we're confident that, we're, that we're, we are building ourselves up with the Word of God and, and spending time with God during this time that we can we can feel pulled and we can feel stretched uh, because of because of work and because of taking care of taking care of our, our wives and our children. But you're not you're not doing anybody any good if you're not taking care of yourself. Right. And I'm not saying you got to go. I'm not talking about working out. And I'm not talking about uh, you know making sure that I'm getting my me time and my man time. I'm talking about getting your God time. And that it's important during this time that that you have the Word of God in you so that you can give it to your spouse, that you guys can then give it to your children, and, and that, that, that your children are seeing you operate as a man of God. And, I, I want and it may not that. be quiet time, yeah. uh, but it can be together time. Yeah, absolutely. And your absolutely. children will never forget that. Yes, absolutely. And so I uh, just wanted, wanted to, to say that because it's important you know, as, as men— we don't lose sight of who, who we are. And God's called us. God's called us to be the head of the family. He's called us to Appreciate be... Appreciate godly men. That's right. And so we, we need that. We need that during this time. But we want to pray with you. Uh, we want to continue. These are the things that we're praying for. We pray, we're pray. praying for our, our medical professionals. Uh, we have a lot of medical professionals in our church. We have a lot of nurses. We appreciate uh, Physical you. therapists. Working extra time right now. We have a, we have a, a pharmacist. So we have Several people, nurses. yeah, that are that are in constant contact with the medical field, uh, and, and they're in constant contact with people that are scared and that are worried and that are concerned. And so we want to be praying for for those guys and and gals because we want them to have the confidence and the boldness that God is God's our source and that He's our supply even through this time. And so we want to be praying for them. We want to be praying for our leaders. We want to be praying for the president. We want to be praying for the governor of our state that he's having to make some decisions uh, about certain areas of the state and uh, you know how to handle and, and to keep this thing contained from the natural. So we want to be praying for praying for them, and then we want to be praying for each other. We want to be praying for the saints because it, it, that is that is what is helping keep the body of Christ going. That's and, right, and you're the light of the world. Yes. More important is the lost around you. Yes. That is God's concern. That is his heart. So that needs to be our heart Absolutely. above and beyond all, all the rest. Yes. So as, as you're you know thinking about how, how do I pray this week, those are the three those are the three things we're praying for. And it's that we believe that they're important and we believe that uh, we're gonna see our, we're gonna get through this. The other folk, folks folks I want us to be praying for are the scientists that are trying to work on a cure in the natural. Yes. Uh, we totally those answers are from God. Yeah, that's that is something because not everybody we would love it. Oh, it'd be great to have just a, a huge revival right now and and, and you, to see the power of God moving. It's more than enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is, and, and the power of God to heal. But people aren't in a place to receive that always. Mm -hmm. Always, and so we need medicine because and, and it's not an accident that medicine heals people and that it helps people. And so we want to be praying for those those people that are working in the medical field and in the, in the pharma, pharmaceutical field that are, that are trying to come up with a vaccine, that are trying to come up with, with the right medicines to, to help people. So be praying for those areas uh, this week, and we will be sending out more and, and other, other things to be praying about. But let's pray before we leave this morning. 
Father God, we love you and praise you, and we just, we thank you so much. Oh, if we could just understand, if we could just grasp it, and Lord, we believe you want us to. We don't think you're holding it back from us. Father God, give us the, the desire, give us the hunger to understand and to fully know, fully trust what you put in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that, that every knee will bow, that every tongue will confess, that everything and everyone will have to stand aside because of that name, because of what's in that name yes. that is backed by you. You backed the name of Jesus. You gave him the name of Jesus. And so, Father God, we, we just ask you just to help us during this time especially, Father God, just to draw closer to you, to draw closer, pull our families in closer, Father God, during this time. And that, Lord, that, that we're just, just resetting. We're, we're resetting ourselves. We're resetting ourselves, and, and we're, we're going to have a desire to put you first, and put you first in this situation, put you first in the decisions that we have to make coming up. But, Father God, most of all, that we're, you're, we're putting you first in our family's lives, that we're putting you first in our lives, and you're putting, we're putting you first in our family's lives. Father, we do want to lift up our president. We want to lift up those in, in government and those in authority. We lift up our, our governor. We lift up the people around him that are uh, advising him. And Father God, we, we just we just want to lift them up to you during this time that they have their list that they're listening to you and that they're getting they're looking for godly wisdom. They're looking for how how the best way to handle it. Not because of they've experienced this before, but because you have something to share with them on, on what the next step should be. And Father, we lift up the those in the medical field, the medical professionals, our nurses, our pharmacists, our doctors, Father God. Lord, we just ask you just to strengthen them during this time. Help them, Father God, to be strong and, and to not be overwhelmed by, by what they're facing and by what they're seeing. Father God, give them peace. Give them the peace that passes understanding in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up the, the medical professionals that are researching and trying to come up with a, a vaccine and, and for medicine to, to, to stop the spread of this virus and to help the people that have it. Father God, I just ask you, Lord, just to give them wisdom. And that, Lord, they'll see things that they've not seen before. They'll see combinations of drugs that they've not seen before that will help stop the spread and, 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 and help the people that have the, the, the coronavirus now in Jesus' name. Yes. And Father, more, most importantly, we do lift up the body of Christ. Father, we yes. lift up the people of True North Church. Yes. We lift up the people that are watching us this morning online. We just we ask you, Father God, just to strengthen us as a body of believers. Strengthen us, Father God. Help us, Lord, to trust you. Help us, Father God, to come to you, to go into that strong tower, that place of refuge, that place of strength, that place that shows your character. Help us, Father God, to go to your word and go to Jesus. And, 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 and Father God, just to, to walk it out with Jesus, to live our life with Jesus. Help us, Father God, help us to see the things in our lives. Open the eyes of our understanding so that we can see you more clearly during this time. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I have one final announcement. Yes. This Saturday, my parents are celebrating their 50th wedding what? anniversary. So we want to give them a great big hug. Um, you might want to send them a card. Reach out to them by yes. text or email. I know they would appreciate it. But uh, congratulations, Mom and Dad. I love you. And that's on Saturday, April the 4th. Right. So Saturday, April 4th. We love you all and we look forward to seeing you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye.